It's nice to have our own personal timepieces. We can use our watches and our phones. If we're alive in the 19th century, we might have used a pocket watch like this. But in the 16th century, if we were rich enough, we could use a pocket sundial like this one. This is called a diptych dial because it has two hinged leaves like a diptych painting. This string gnomon here makes sure that the two leaves open at the appropriate angle. But before we can use it, we need to place it on a horizontal surface and ensure that the gnomon is orientated to point north. This compass has been built into the lower leaf to let us do so. Now, the shadow of the gnomon, cast by the sun, falls onto the main horizontal dial and indicates the local time. Here, we can see that it's 10 o'clock and as the sun travels through the day, we see the shadow move, indicating the passing time. This is more than a simple pocket dial. There are extra pin gnomons and accessories that were particularly useful for travellers. This table shows different latitudes for multiple European cities. If we thread the gnomon through the appropriate hole on the upper leaf, we make sure that it forms the correct angle for the latitude of the city that we're in. There are other dials here with pin gnomons that help us calculate the equal hours system. Our diptych dial also has a wind rose on the outside of the upper leaf and a lunar volvel on the underside. These types of diptych dials were made by specialist craftsmen in 16th century Nuremberg from a handful of families. They're made from ivory, a luxury material, and have been intricately carved. As they were expensive, they were normally owned by wealthy merchants or nobility. Our diptych dial was owned by the museum's founder, Lewis Evans, and it forms part of the original collections. In the portrait of him that hangs in the entrance gallery of the museum, you can see him holding the diptych dial. Try and spot it next time you're in.